Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at the Microsoft Surface 3, a new tablet hybrid out of Redmond. Now, unlike the Surface Pro 3, this bad boy is a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, and a lot cheaper. Let's take a look. The device, in its most basic form, comes with 2GB of RAM and 64GB of internal memory. Both are upgradable to twice the capacity for a flat $100 fee. As with prior Surface devices, the Surface 3's keyboard is sold separately. For the Surface 3, the keyboard has been redesigned to match its smaller size. The keys now stretch all the way to the edges of the keyboard surface. The Surface 3 is likely aimed at students and other computing users who need portability and strong note-taking capabilities, but not the full power of a business device. The screen is a bright 10.8-inch 1920x1280 display. If you're familiar with the Pro 3 screen, it's quite similar, just a bit smaller. So as you can tell here, the Surface 3 has a smaller screen and footprint than the Surface Pro 3. If you look carefully at the keyboards, they're a different color, I know, but if you look, there's less bezel here along the edge. That's how they got the keyboard to be smaller to fit the 10.8 inch display on the Surface 3 compared to the 12 inch display on the Surface Pro 3. On the weight side of things, the 3 weighs 622 grams, the Pro 3 weighs 798 grams. The Surface 3 uses a slower processor than the Surface Pro 3. It currently uses an Intel Atom X7 processor. The Surface Pro 3 itself uses Intel Core i3, Core i5, or Core i7 processors. However, the lower power choice means that the Surface 3 can handle up to 10 hours of video playback on a single charge. So here we have the original Surface RT. This was the very first Surface that ever came out, and it had a kickstand. It was a big deal, but the kickstand only had one slot. You could pull it out to there, and that was it. Then came the Surface 2 about a year later, and it had something kind of different. It had two different kickstand positions. So you can do one, and then two, and that was it. With the Pro 3, Microsoft introduced a new sort of kickstand for the device that was unlimited. You can literally just go from here, and then as far as you want in any position you'd like. Now, with the 3, the new Surface 3, it's kind of a combination of the two. So here we have three different positions, not a limited slide, but still more than the other predecessors. So the Surface 3 can do this. You can go one, two, and then Three. Microsoft has long offered two tiers of Surface devices, one aimed at consumers and another aimed at business customers. The Surface 3 nearly fits in between the two, offering a smaller package and a price point than the Surface Pro 3, but also a full build of Windows, Office, and a dock of its own. When Microsoft first introduced the Surface RT and the entire Surface line of tablet hybrids, it wasn't clear if they would sell well. Did consumers and businesses actually want this form factor? Did they want a tablet they could do more work with? Did they want a lighter laptop? It wasn't clear. However, now that the Surface Pro 3 has done surprisingly well on the market, Microsoft is making a new bet. It can take the same model that did well last time at a lower price point for a different demographic. Now it's an open question if it'll do well, but we'll know soon enough.